Hey guys, Rob here with Make Doja Life, and the man who just got done watching attack a shoe store salesman goes by the name of Christopher Williams. I guess they didn't have a size fives in stock. Christopher here runs Markham Martial Arts in Ontario, Canada, and according to the website, is the owner and head instructor. His bio on the website says that Muay Thai helped provide him with a, quote, feeling of serenity he never knew. Well, that seems pretty accurate based off that video that we just watched. Apparently, he never knew and still does not know serenity. Serenity now! Can we just take a moment to give credit to the shoe store guy who took those shots like a champion. On March 16th, that shoe store posted that video on their Instagram page, and it was sent to me by multiple sources. So I started digging. I reached out to the owner, the employee who was assaulted, the police, and Christopher himself. Here's a quick interview that I did with the owner and shoe store employee. Okay, my name is Sven. I own the Savage Cake, which is a shoe store in Toronto. My name is Dennis, and I work on the Savage Cake shoe store. Could you walk me through the incident, start to finish? At a day, um, we just, I'm just working on the social media scene. Uh, same with my employee which is Dennis and this guy uh, came in just didn't say hi to him and he got mad uh, we look at him and he said you want a customer or not why you guys uh, don't say hi or hello to me and yeah maybe it's our fault we don't say hi to a customer a customer and um, and we, we, we say okay hi and you can free, free to check because every, every item we got buy something we can negotiate a little bit and yeah, he just keep talking like oh, why why you guys don't say hello to me and at that time I'm just saying I'm just uh, Say this guy got mental problem, and he looks weird. He said, "Say sorry to me right now," and like he fa his face got furious at that moment. Say sorry to me right now. And all of a sudden, he just took out his phone and he's playing the vi victim. And he's he's threatening us. Uh, he said, oh, now it's self-defense. I, I heard it. He ran to me and punched me twice. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
the security uh, came and he just ran away. When, when the police first uh, came to my store, police have no idea who the guy is. is. So we, we found out who, who is he. Someone told me uh, he was a boxing coach. So we uh, searched on the Google map and yeah, and we caught it. Uh, first place, first picture is him. So we called 911 and just reported. The property manager told me he punched two guys arguing with that, with that two guys and uh, he used his weapon to punch the Korean guy's nose. And uh, yeah, they're still in the hospital. The property manager told me that. But he, they didn't know uh, where he from and where, where he where he actually addressed. Just uh, use this kind of things to punch people, to punch the Korean guy. I think the next Monday, please contact Dennis. And he said they tried to get get in his crib, but he ran away. For sure, I, I like for sure. This uh, this uh, police told Dennis, and he tried to get get this guy in his gym. I don't know which location he he got. They got him, but like definitely not his house. And he definitely ran away at at the first place. I got to get this out of the way right now before we move on with all the things that Christopher has done. I don't think that the owner handled this correctly. Once Chris left the store, he should have just let it be and moved on with life. But him following Chris out of the store did escalate the situation. That does not mean that anyone should have been assaulted for it, but still, the owner should have not escalated. The owner, employee, and police were all very helpful. When I reached out to Christopher, on the other hand, I did not get a very welcoming response. As a matter of fact, he threatened to sue me, and then he blocked me. That will come into play later on in the story, but we continue. I took all the information that I gathered and I made this post. Hey guys, Rob here with McDojo Life, and this is Christopher Williams. Chris here runs Markham Martial Arts in Ontario, Canada. And this is also Christopher Williams assaulting a shoe store employee. <laughs> Chris here clearly is not a smart man because he decided to wear his company logo while committing a crime. This made it very easy for the police to find him. Chris was arrested for this and he is out on bail now and awaiting trial set for April 29th. After I spoke with police, they let me know that in fact, this is not the only time that he has done something very similar to this. When I reached out to Chris for a statement, he threatened legal action against me if I covered this story. Well, I guess you're gonna have to just fucking sue me then. Suck my balls. Oh, and keep the martial arts legit. As you can imagine, Chris was a smidge upset. Maybe it was the part where I told him to suck my balls. So in response, Christopher made a post on his Facebook account asking people to report my account. And then shortly after that, deleted it. But I guess that didn't work seeing as how my pages are all still up and in good standing. Suck my balls two times. One person left a comment on that post asking, so the video and arrest record aren't true. To which he responded, not real, sir. Ask him to provide you with the official documents and video of my face. Not real? That's right, he just denied ever even being arrested, which is complete I received this directly from the Toronto police. In relation to the incident you speak of at the shoe store, he was arrested for two counts of assault and possession of a weapon dangerous to public peace. As you advised, he has his next court appearance in April. I would advise you to attend the court and hear about the other charges in relation to him. You notice how it said other charges related to him? There are seven people attached to his no contact order, not just the two involved with that particular incident. There are more incidents in that mall associated with him that he is accused of being a part of. I also have his case number and his name directly on the email right next to it. So yes, he was arrested and yes, he was released on a $2,000 bail. But that comment thread wasn't the only time he denied it. You see, when people found out about this happening, they decided to start going to Google reviews and leaving reviews on on his business page and he provided pretty much the same stock answer every time please remove this as there is no evidence relating the owner to these allegations legal action will be taken if not taken down immediately that's right once again he denies even being related to this incident i don't think he knows what the word relate means so let's help him out to make or show a connection between in that case there is a lot of evidence relating christopher to these allegations like this video where you can clearly see his face eyewitness accounts of Christopher being the attack.
attacker. Police statements stating his charges. Not to mention the fact that police say that he is on bail. And of course, the fact that he was wearing his company logo in the video. I mean, what kind of moron wears their company logo when committing assault on camera? But lying about it isn't the only way he's reacting. Remember earlier when I told you he blocked me? This is where it comes into play. You see, Chris unblocked me just to send me this message. Christopher Williams, Toronto, Ontario, March 25th, 2024. McDojo Life. Dear Administrators, I am writing to formally request that you cease and desist from using any personal information relating to ongoing legal matters regarding Christopher Williams on your Instagram account. McDojo Life. This information is confidential and its unauthorized use constitutes a violation of privacy and legal rights. Please be advised that the dissemination of such information is unlawful and unethical. We demand that you immediately remove all posts, comments, or any other content containing personal information regarding Christopher Williams from your Instagram account. First off, this man clearly has no clue how reporting or the law works. And second, which is it? On one hand, you say there is no evidence relating the owner, you, to these allegations. But on the other hand, in that statement, you say legal matters regarding Christopher Williams, which is clearly you admitting that it relates to you. So which is it? <laughs> is, is it relating to you or not? This brings us to his boy who cried victim <laughs> You see, he unblocked me to contact me and which I responded to him writing me. He threatened legal action against me, to which I responded it's not illegal to tell the truth. He called my reporting a quote, personal campaign against him, to which I reminded him that news exists. He then sent me that letter two more times, and here comes the victim card. Please stop harassing me, is what he wrote to me. And even though I'm only responding to what he's writing to me, I simply said, have a nice day. He then sent the letter again, to which I didn't respond. He then says again, stop harassing me. I didn't respond. He said I was somehow attempting to acquire personal information and yet again didn't respond. Then says this is illegal, to which I finally just said, stop contacting me. What I really wanted to say was but I thought that that would be more professional. He then sent me three more messages after that, to which I had to reiterate for him to stop contacting me. And even after that, he sent me yet another one. At that point, I was just tired of this crap, so I blocked him and moved on with life. The point of me showing you that is this is him trying to play the victim, and I use the word play very literally. You see, I'm not the only person he has harassed. He's harassed many other people, and even in those harassments, has left little emojis of chess pieces, and in one conversation, referred to him harassing people as, quote, chess, not checkers. Brother, you were really bad at chess. And the interaction he had with me is honestly probably one of the most mild. Apparently, after I posted my video about him, he was going through the comment sections and finding ways to harass people who left comments. Do you remember earlier when we touched on the fact that people were leaving reviews on his business account about his actions? Those reviews were left on his business page about something he actually did. Those reviews help better inform the public about the character of the owner of the facility and lead instructor. The reason I bring up those reviews is because he decided to start leaving reviews on other people's businesses as well. You see, he was hunting down personal information about people who left comments so that way he could find out where they worked and leave bad reviews on their business pages. The difference between their reviews and his reviews, his were completely made up Came here to learn martial arts. Instead, I get some very beginner instructors with minimal experience. Don't go here. Apparently, he never even set foot in that school. Has he ever been in your martial arts school? Nope. Another review stated this. While visiting Chicago, I attended a seminar and scheduled a training session with Alex at Chicago Strength. Regrettably, the experience was subpar. Alex was tardy, the session was cut short, and his ability to demonstrate workouts was lacking. I'd advise against wasting your time at this gym. Not only was that review completely made up as he had never set foot in that gym a day in his life, but the icing on the cake was he didn't even write it for the correct business. <laughs> Hi, Christopher. I'm sorry you had a bad experience somewhere. I'm afraid you left your review on the wrong business though. I'm the owner, Dave, and we haven't had an employee named Alex in three years. Also, I do all of the initial sessions with new members and we haven't met. We are Chicago Strength and Conditioning and not affiliated with Chicago Strength. You're not the first to confuse us. We often get members cancellation requests from their members. Would you please take down your review and leave it with the proper business? 
Thanks. That review, by the way, is still up on Google harming a business that had nothing to do at all with the person he was trying to attack. Maybe you're thinking to yourself it was a simple mistake of the wrong location. Hell, even the owner himself said that they get confused all the time. But that doesn't make up for the fact that he did this to two other locations and it's still made up. The reviews are just the tip of the iceberg of him lashing out. One person he sent over 30 messages to for simply saying the word wow in the comment section. He even attempted to dox people who commented. And at one point, he even started sending himself texts to try to frame someone for a crime for leaving a comment. Just listen to the text. You think Facebook is all I can do? Better watch yourself. Nolan is not to be messed with. I know exactly where your gym is. He even posted publicly about this and said that the guy left a bullet in front of his gym which of course he then in turn deleted along with every message that he sent to the guy, which was an astonishing amount. Even though me and Chris had agreed not to contact each other directly anymore, he still continued to post on his Facebook page and tag me over and over and over again. He even made a post talking about his charity work that he does. Well, Chris, here you go. Here's the post that you made about your charity work that you claim. But I truly hope you don't talk to those kids like you talk to your don't own worry, students. I'm not gonna throw you down. Fucking faggot. Oh, that's right. You heard correctly. That was actually a post that he made and put up for the public to see about his coaching. To add to this, some people even reached out to me trying to defend Chris, saying that he's always been a good guy, and it's just recently that he started acting this way. That is bullhicky. One of the same people who reached out to me to defend Chris, to tell me that he's such a good guy, confirmed that he was kicked out of a gym for bullying. Not to mention the fact that he also previously threatened someone who was a potential customer for his apparel store who tried to order shorts from him. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't say that him calling students him threatening customers and getting kicked out of a gym for bullying is a track record of a good guy. Now, recently, Christopher has also been going live multiple times a day on his Instagram account. Each time, he would act very erratic. He would cuss out pretty much everyone who was watching, and he even threatened the guy who was holding the camera for him. Guess what? Okay. Coleman, we need more viewing space. Figure it out how to get more viewing space. It's too close. It's too close. Okay, Move the I got box. It. Stand up. Move the box. Stand up. Move things around. Figure it out. Please. I'm in your fucking face. Fucking make, make me angry, bro. I don't know why. Like, a, you're a fuck. Like, like, you got fucking down central, bro. I swear to Yo, Chris, it's just... Why you make me not behave like this, bro? Turn it off, bro. All right. Why you can't do this? For the last couple days, though, Chris has been fairly silent. And if I had to guess, it's probably because he's been arrested again. Now, this is just a guess. Every day since I posted the video, people would contact me about his behavior, and it was becoming more and more erratic. He made a phone call to one person and threatened to kill their wife and child, and then posted about it as if he was the victim. He also threatened to shoot up a store in which he was also playing the victim. Police had apparently raided his house and found firearms that he was not allowed to possess. And when I called him out on all of these things that I just talked to you about, he does not once try to deny any of it. But out of all of these things, there is one thing that truly does stand out to me that gives me a little bit of sorrow for Chris. His so-called friends, who while all this was going on, were well aware that apparently Chris has some type of a mental health issue according to them. One of those comments stated the following. This is a former champion and professional fighter who is obviously going through something. With all the awareness about mental health out there, maybe you should lighten up. My response to him is the exact same response I'll give right now. I'll lighten up when I stop getting messages of him harassing people every day. Maybe Chris does have a mental health issue. Maybe Chris has a drug issue. Maybe Chris is just a psycho piece of garbage. But one thing is clear, he does need help. Standing by while you watch your friend implode and explode on everyone else, dodging accountability is not being a friend. See, every one of those people who reached out to me claimed that Chris just has some mental health issues. 
but not one of them, not one, actually made the attempt to get him the help he needs. You see, I didn't say the mental help he wants. I said the mental help he needs, which brings me to the 5150 Act. A person with a mental illness to be involuntarily detained for a 72-hour psychiatric hospitalization. You see, it took me about two minutes to look that up and find out that he could be detained if he's having some type of psychiatric meltdown. Keep in mind, while you so-called friends of Christopher were trying to tout about how much of a good guy he is, you were completely ignoring actually getting him any help whatsoever that he truly needs. Currently, I'm really hoping that he's isolated from people. I hope he's either arrested or I hope that he is getting the psychiatric help he needs in a mental hospital. But during that entire tirade, somebody who truly cares about him could have reached out and gotten him the help that he needed, but chose not to. I do not truly believe that Chris is always a bad guy. I believe that most people are shades of gray. I believe he has done some horrible things that we have just discussed. But I also believe he's probably done some good things too. That's just kind of how people are. Some people are more good than bad. Some people are more bad than good. I truly hope Christopher gets the help he needs. I hope that there's a support structure there to help him become a better man than what he's showing the public right now. This would normally be the part where I'd give out Dillman's, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is go straight to the question of the day. If you were a friend of Christopher yourself, even if you don't know him, and you saw him going down this path, what would you do in order to help him out? Because who knows? Maybe you know somebody who has had this happen to them before, and maybe somebody will watch this who's going through something similar and learn a little something from how you guys would react. Be sure to answer that question in the comment sections below so that way I know that you watched the entire video. As always, thank you all for the likes, comments, shares, subscriptions, and memberships. Keep the martial arts legit. My baby got robbed the other day by the generates. So she wanted to learn some new form of this self-defense. So she did her research and for rules, did online and found his tools and he could move shit with his mind. He call himself Sifu Paul Zimmerman. He got a dojo with a strip on near Cinnabon. Now she spends all day trying to break boards with the thoughts. But the only thing she's breaking is my little heart.